Good evening. Um, the easiest way for me to explain this to you is to illustrate it by means of a little uh, tutorial. I like to give tutorials like this. So, um, one of the first things I want to mention is that presumably that you've noticed at this point that the eraser tool um, does not behave quite like it does in Microsoft Paint. Um, instead of, you know, just removing artwork that you've made and leaving a white background behind, it gives you this annoying gray and white grid pattern, which is just not helpful at all, right? Well, I want to try and explain that a little bit. Um, this is the layers window, the layers panel, whatever you want to call it. If you don't have this, presumably you've closed it. You can bring it back up by pressing F7, or alternatively you can go into window and then layers but F7 works just as well. So you'll notice that the background is white by default. If I was to create, say, a new layer, see, instead of being white, it's got that, that white and gray background, that checkerboard. If I was to turn off the background layer by unchecking it, oh, look at that. And so what you see there, that, that checkerboard pattern there, that's transparency that's really all it is. It's going to be the same thing in Photoshop. And this, I've got to say, is one of the number one differences between Microsoft Paint and any other image editor is the ability to use layers. It is a huge, huge deal. And I'm going to explain to you why in a moment. Okay, so transparency probably for you is not going to be such a big deal. Um, you know, if you're doing things like graphics design where you're making desktop icons and things transparency is a big deal but for at least what I've seen you do so far you probably won't use it that much but I'm getting ahead of myself um, I go want to address the problem that you're having with that little white noise so I'm gonna take a circle My anti-aliasing is on and I'm just going to draw a circle okay simple enough I'm going to take my fill tool, just select a random primary color, and fill it in. Now, that seems simple enough, right? That's exactly what you would do in Microsoft Paint if you wanted to fill in a circle, but you see when you zoom in, oops, sorry about that grid, is that you get a lot of this little white noise around the edges, and I'll explain to you why that is. It's because what the fill tool basically is, is it's just an algorithm. And when you hit it, it reads the color of the pixel that you're clicking on, which is white in this case, and this algorithm just says, okay, so we're going to turn every adjacent white pixel to red until we hit a significant color change. And so that's what it does. It just spreads out until it hits a color change, which is this black. The problem with anti-aliasing is if you zoom in close enough, you'll see that there are very gradual color changes here. Uh, little bits of black that are more transparent than others, and so this algorithm isn't really sure where to stop and where to start. And so what you get is parts of the gray that the algorithm decided were too stark of a difference to turn to red, and then the other lighter parts it just overwrote, which is just, you know, not that great. And it doesn't look very good, as we can see. So there's a pretty simple solution to this. As a general rule, when you're trying to fill in an outline like this, you never, ever do it on the same on the same layer as your outline. Your fill is never on the same layer as your outline. That's just, you know, write it down. That's that's how it should work. So I'm actually going to get rid of this circle. I'm going to put a new layer above it. And and see, I've got this layer selected. I can select the background, which means I'll be drawing on background, or layer 2, which means I'll be drawing on layer 2. I want layer 2, so actually I want that to be black. Just like so. And so functionally, this is pretty much the same as what we've been doing all along. It's just you just draw, and you have the white background, and it's just fine. But, you know, for instance, now I will select background 2. And, well, see, I can't just take the fill tool now and, and try to fill it because there's, you know, this outline doesn't exist on, on the background layer. It doesn't have any kind of restraint. So I don't know if you've noticed this about our uh, selections, either the rectangular selections or the elliptical selections, but when you have a selection selected, you can't do anything outside that selection. Like, I can't draw over here. I can draw inside the selection, but it won't let me draw outside the selection. 
which is kind of a useful tool actually and you're going to see a good application for that in a moment because so I've got the background layer selected and I'm going to draw a selection that you know sort of matches up with our outline. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it doesn't cross over the inside edge and I am going to fill in that selection. <clears throat> Control D to deselect and so now if we zoom in look at that beautiful anti-aliasing. It doesn't conflict because the changes in transparency around the edges are layered on top of the red background and so it's really that simple you just never have your fill on the same layer as your outline the outline stays on top